Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Abelson from Kinetic Health. Hello, I'm Dr. Tarveen Alamoy from Kinetic Health, and today we have the privilege and exclusive access to the Body Worlds Exhibit 1 in Edmonton, Alberta at the TELUS World of Science. And it is just incredible. You're really going to enjoy this one. The wonderful thing about these plastinate models is we can actually show relationships between different layers of tissue. For example, if we're looking at the IT band, I can show how it actually sits on top of the lateral quad or the vastus lateralis. We're always trying to show people how one layer of tissue can get restricted or impede the motion of that particular structure, the IT band sitting on the lateral quad. But these models, it's so clear. This is the best example of an anatomical structure that, and a dissection that I've ever seen. Nothing else comes close. Foot problems are very common. And one of the things I'm always trying to explain to patients is how the tendons on the front of our legs get stuck in what we call retinaculums or bands that hold our connective tissue in place. I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit, be so close to the foot here, and what we're going to do is we're going to see some bands right here, and you see we've got these horizontal bands with tendons running underneath. And those horizontal bands are really quite unique. The ones here and another one's right here. They're called retinaculum. What they do is they hold the tendons in place and quite often will get restrictions on between the tendon and the retinaculum, which will inhibit relative motion. In other words, we should get a gliding or a threading of those tendons right through the retinaculum. And when that happens, people start getting ankle problems, they start getting problems in the way that they pronate, supinate, and the way that they walk. This model of the basketball player is a great example of a kinetic chain relationship with the core. What's amazing about this, if we look at different muscle structures here, we see how power is generated from the core. Latissimus dorsi coming around the side here. But the core is much, we think of the core as just our abdominal area, but it's not. It's everything in the entire structure. In other words, part of our core is actually maybe the upper part of the glutes here. If we take a look at the relationship here, we've generated power through the core, let's say down the glute max, and then we follow this all the way down, we see how 50% of the fibers from here actually go into the IT band. Quite often we'll get the IT band appearing to the lateral quad on there, but the power that's generated through this area, a lot of it actually comes from our ankles. Let's just sort of pan down here towards the ankle here, and we see that our ankles in running actually act as a spring. What we do is we store energy here and release it. So every time you're going back and forth, you're storing and releasing, storing and releasing. So it's not just a matter of contracting muscles, but there's a lot of passive motions that we do in our kinetic chain that are enable us to perform an action. That's why it's so important for us to not have restrictions in those muscles, to make sure that everything moves freely so we can store energy and release energy. Oftentimes you get people coming in and they have back problems, and the back problems aren't necessarily in the back or in the glute area. They can be caused by restrictions in the front area, which is the muscles that lie deep within the abdomen. If you look at this best one here, it gives you a very good example of some of the nerves that can be entrapped in the front. You see the, the sp uh, lumbar spine right there. From the lumbar spine you get a very good view of the psoas muscle and uh, iliacus muscle. You see this nerve coming through here, it's called the femoral nerve. It comes deep within the abdomen and it goes all the way down through the hip flexor muscles, like the quadricep muscles, which consists of four different muscles. You see the nerve come all the way down and the nerve and the muscles go all the way down to the knee. So it's not unheard of to have people that come in that have back problems, but then they also have pain within their inguinal area. They'll have pain, for males for instance, they'll have pain in their testicle area. Well, this is why it happens, because the nerve that comes from <coughs> deep within the abdomen goes all the way down into the upper leg. The following orientation of a body shows the arm in an abducted position. If you look at it, how the arm comes up, it's at shoulder height there. And there's a lot of motions that we do throughout the activities of daily living or athletic events that require our arm to be at shoulder uh, height or above our head. For instance, this is a, uh, a body that's in position to play basketball, but events like swimming, volleyball, 
and other sports require you to bring your arm above your head. And it's not just muscles in your arm that allow you to do that motion, it's also muscles in your upper back. For instance, you get a very good idea here of how you've got muscle down below here called the latissimus dorsi that allows you to bring your arm up. You've also got your trapezius muscle, which holds your arm at shoulder height. And if you look deep within this area here, you've got your infraspinatus, teres major, uh, teres minor, portion of the deltoid that allows that arm to be at shoulder height. Also see how the tri uh, tricep muscle is involved within that motion. So it's not just one motion, it's not just, or one muscle, and it's not just a one particular area of the body. For instance, your arm is also your upper back and portions of your lower back. That's why having a strong core and a stable core allows you to use your extremities, such as your arms. And this dissection here does a very good job of showing the spinal canal and how it lays on top of the different bones within your spine, which are called vertebrae. And from there, in between each bone, you've got nerve roots that come off and shoot into different areas of the body, and they plug into or innervate different organs, be it the heart, liver, kidneys, or different muscular structures. This body is sitting at a chess table playing chess. Now, this is a very good example of how our body is throughout the day if we have a desk job or we do a lot of work on a computer. As you can see, the head is tilted slightly forward and that causes stress on the muscles in the neck. And if you go a little bit further down, you look at the muscles in front of the chest or the pectoralis muscles and how they tighten and contract as the shoulders are rolled forward. If you look at the core, the back is slightly tilt forward and that causes more stress on your low back and the upper legs, the person sitting there, so the hip flexors are also tight and contracted, which often explains why people who sit at a desk all day have neck problems and low back problems. In this particular plastinate, I'd like to talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. Usually we think of carpal tunnel syndrome as an area that's going to be affected directly in our wrist, but in reality it can affect a lot of different areas. We're going to get exactly the same symptoms if we get nerve impingement, whether it's up in the neck, through an area called the brachial plexus, which goes through muscles here called the scalenes, down around underneath the arm, even in the mid-arm, and where the median nerve comes down the center here. We commonly think of carpal tunnel as just being this area. But we can get entrapment at any point along this entire kinetic chain and we're going to get exactly the same symptoms. Just on a side note, if you have carpal tunnel syndrome, you're going to have these three fingers affected. It's not going to be the outside ones, four and five. That's going to be the ulnar nerve which comes down here. The radial nerve goes over here and the median nerve down the center here. Quite often people will come into our office and patients will tell me they've got really bad carpal tunnel syndrome and these fingers are really numb. That's not carpal tunnel syndrome. This is a really interesting plastinate model. One of the reasons why is because if we look up here near the edge of the jaw, we start to understand some of the kinetic chain relationships. People come in with jaw problems or TMJ, and they don't really understand that any tension they have in the neck or the shoulders is gonna translate right into their jaw. A very, very common thing. So if they're gonna be resolving this condition, they need to look at not only the particular area that's affected, but the front and the back of the body. We'd like to thank the Body Worlds exhibit for allowing us to come to this exhibit and take these videos. We'd also like to thank the TELUS World of Science in Edmonton and the staff in particular for participating and cooperating with us during the production process. And also the Alberta College and Association of Chiropractic for being a key sponsor of this exhibit while it's here in Edmonton. We highly encourage you to come to Edmonton to see this exhibit wherever you are in Alberta or neighboring provinces. This exhibit is here all the way up until October 13th, I believe. So please make the effort to come out here and visit the uh, Body Worlds exhibit website at uh, www.bodyworlds.com. And if you would like more information about kinetic health and what we do, please visit www.drabelson.com. And if you're in and around the Calgary area and you'd like to know more about what we do, please visit us at our clinic called Kinetic Health. Thank you for joining us today for this video production. Thank you.